Steering behaviors are great for creating natural and realistic movement. So far we've covered seek and flee, and in this tutorial we're going to cover a few more. Pursue and evade are very similar to seek and flee, but with one important difference. While seek and flee seek and flee a target's current position, pursue and evade use a target's predicted future position. For example, with seek, this ship would go straight towards the target. And this works well for a stationary target, but what if the target is moving? In that case, I think we can all agree it would be better if the ship went in this direction, predicting where its target will be in the future and moving towards that position. And this is what Pursue does. It predicts where the target will be at some point in the future, and then seeks that position instead. Evade does the same thing, but it flees the future position instead of seeking it. So with both Pursue and Evade, the important thing is to figure out how to calculate the future position because once we have that future position, we can just call Seek or Flee on it. While there are different ways that you can calculate the future position, we're going to keep it very simple. All we're going to do is take the target's current position and add the target's velocity scaled by some amount, for example 10. So we take velocity, scale it by 10, a prediction of where the ship will be in 10 steps if it keeps the same direction and velocity, and add that to its current position, giving us the new position to seek or flee from. We can implement this with just a few lines of code, but there are several important things to mention. First, since predicting a future position relies on position plus velocity, you can only use this on objects that have a position and a velocity. In code, this means objects that have those variables, or you will crash the game. But since we have this restriction, and we know that we'll be seeking an object that has both a position and a velocity, we can pass in an object or an instance of an object to our function directly. The second important thing to keep in mind is that all of our vector methods, like add and multiply, actually change the vector that they're attached to. So if we were to write inst.velocity.multiply by 10, inst.position.addVelocity, we would get the right future position, but we would actually be changing our target's velocity and position. Now we don't want to do that, so the first thing we are going to do is copy the velocity vector. Now we can scale the copied vector and add position to it without affecting either our target's velocity or our target's position. Note that these methods only affect the vector being added to, so we don't need to copy the target's position. That's also why we are starting with velocity, because if we copied position, we'd have to copy both position and velocity since we do need to modify the velocity vector. But once we have this new position, all we need to do is call seek on it. And just like in the last tutorial, we get evade for free. All we need to do is duplicate this code and change seek force to flee force. Now we have our two new steering behaviors. To demonstrate this, I've already set up two new ships here. We have object pursue and evade and object seek flee. The only real difference between these two ships is that one will use the steering behaviors pursue and evade and the other one will use seek and flee. And in each case we can toggle between their behaviors with the spacebar. One quick note here, I'm referencing the object seeker directly. This is fine for demonstration purposes, but you shouldn't do this in a real game. I've also already put both of these objects in the room, but let's start by turning off the seek and flee ship so we can just look at the pursue and evade one. Now, when we run this, we can see the red ship chasing the yellow one, trying to cut it off, and if I push spacebar, it evades. If we want, we can come back to the steering behavior scripts and increase the amount of time that we're looking ahead, and we can run it again, and we can see that even though the red ship is slower than the yellow ship, it has no problem catching the yellow ship if the yellow ship turns too sharply. It's also very effective at evading the yellow ship now as well. Let's reactivate the seek and flee ship and run it again. And you can see that while the blue ship does still seek the yellow ship, the red ship is significantly better at both seeking and evading. Now let's look at Arrive. If I remove these two ships and I run it again, you can see that the ship that seeks the mouse overshoots its target, the mouse, then overshoots it again and again and again. And it will always overshoot its target because with seek, after getting the direction to the target, we set the desired velocity to max speed, regardless of how close the object actually is to the target. And so it will overshoot since the ship is always trying to go as fast as it can in that direction. 
The goal of the arrive behavior is for the ship to gradually slow down as it approaches the target and to stop at the target rather than overshoot it. For arrive therefore, we need to set the desired velocity based on how close the object is to the target. Far away it should be at max speed, and as it gets closer, its desired speed should be less and less, until finally at the target its desired speed should be zero. To do this, we are going to set a slowing radius, which we can visualize as a circle around the target, and outside of this circle, the desired velocity will be max speed. But inside of this circle, we slow the desired velocity down so that it will be zero by the time it reaches the center, the target. Fortunately, there is a simple mathematical trick that gets us this result. If we take the distance our ship currently is from the target and divide it by the slowing radius, then if we are inside of this circle, we will get a number between 0 and 1. At the edge, let's say it's 100. 100 divided by 100 will give us 1. In the middle, 50 divided by 100 will give us 0 0.5. And at the center, 0 divided by 100 will give us 0. And then all we need to do is scale our max speed by this number. In code, we're going to start with the seek behavior. So let me duplicate it, and then we're going to add the argument slowing radius. Then, after we subtract our position from our target, remember from the last tutorial on seek, this gives us a vector from our current position to our target. We check the length of this vector and save the result to distance so we don't have to recalculate it. Then, if our distance is greater than the slowing radius, we are outside of the circle and we can set our velocity to max speed just like before, but otherwise, we are inside of the circle and we want to set our desired velocity to max speed times distance divided by the slowing radius. So let's say it is 50 divided by 100. This gives us 0 0.5 times max speed gives us half max speed. Everything else is the exact same because once we have our desired velocity, we want to steer towards it exactly as before. And now if I come back over to our ship and simply change this to arrive and pass in a slowing radius, we can run it. And there we go. Our ship now slows down and stops at the mouse rather than overshooting it. Now, how well this works and what distance you should choose for the slowing radius depends on what you're going for. But this is a good time to remember that these are not magical forces with guaranteed actions. They're the ship's desires and how well the ship can act on that desire depends on other things. In our case, at this point, just max speed and max force. So if we were to come over to the ship's create event and give it a higher speed and a lower max force and run this again, the ship's going to overshoot several times because the max amount it can affect itself is max force, and that's no longer high enough to stop in this distance. A link to the source code for all of this is down below, and I know that I said we would add forces together in this tutorial, but in prepping for this tutorial, I felt like it would make a lot more sense to cover that topic in the next one when we add in the wander behavior, which should be linked in the top right once it's up.